basically between March of 2020 and September 2020, there were almost no evictions in the whole state of California. You had to be having an active meth lab selling drugs to be able to evict someone and like five police officers testifying in court that they are selling drugs. So in Ventura County, there were basically zero evictions for the entire time period of March to September 2020. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jose Luis Morales. Welcome back to the Morales Group Show. Uh, this is episode number 70. Uh, today, we've got a repeat guest and a new guest. Uh, our first guest is attorney Brian Nomi. He's an attorney here in Southern California. Uh, he's been on previous episodes with us talking about the eviction moratorium in the current state of, of tenant and landlord law. And then we also have our office manager here at the Morales Group, Camila Hernandez, uh, who actually applied for rental assistance on one of our properties. And she's going to be going over that process for our landlord and tenant clients as well, too. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. and I'm happy to be here, Jose Luis. Thank you. Yeah, doing well. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. So before we get into the episode, I want to remind our viewers, if you've enjoyed some of our previous content, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, it'll help us out tremendously. And obviously, if you're seeing enough value in the interviews, feel free to hit that share button. So let's get started. Um, the eviction moratorium just got extended. Uh, Brian, can you tell us how long it got extended for? And then can you give us just a brief recap of some of the things that we've talked about in previous episodes that have happened since the uh, pandemic uh, came into effect? Okay. Well, the eviction moratorium started when COVID started, basically. So we're mm -hmm. talking late March 2020, last year. Mm -hmm. um, so the eviction moratorium, they, they shut down the courts, they shut down everything back in late March of 2020. Um, mm -hmm. It's been extended a few times. The current extension goes until September 30th, 2021. And okay. it basically is continuing the law that's been in effect since September of 2020. September 2020, basically between March of 2020 and September 2020, there were almost no evictions in the whole state of California. You had mm -hmm. to be having an active meth lab selling drugs to be able to evict someone. And like five police officers testifying in court that they are selling drugs. So in Ventura County, there were basically zero evictions for the entire time period of March to September 2020. From September 2020 until now, we're working with the current framework. It just keeps getting extended over and over. That framework set to expire on September 30th, 2021. So that's an important timeline to keep in mind. Uh -huh. The indications, I mean, there was some talk of dropping it um, back on June 30th, but they extended it to September 30th. I think it's going to be over or at least almost completely over on October 1st, 2021. So that's the California state uh, framework to keep in mind. The federal framework, which is nationwide, is that there's a non there's a CDC moratorium that's in effect until July 31st. Mm -hmm. That the CDC thing doesn't really apply, but it does apply if you have out of state properties. I, I won't even get into that. California is what we're talking about here, uh, specifically even Ventura County. So, um, what? How can you evict someone right now under the current law? You can evict someone for for either at fault or no fault reasons. At fault would be criminal conduct serious breach of the lease, such as uh, subleasing or damaging the property, waste causing destruction of the property, or just, you know, failure to maintain the property causing, you know, extreme damages. Um, other things like that, you know, basically serious criminal conduct, serious breaches of the lease, failure to allow the landlord to enter the property is one thing that's specifically allowed as a grounds for eviction. Those are the, those are some of the, I didn't cover them all, but those are some of the general at fault reasons that you can terminate a tenant right now. In addition to the at fault reasons, there are no fault reasons. Um, and I'll go over those very briefly. I, I went over them in much greater detail in my previous videos with you, but no fault reasons would include the owner or the owner's family intends to move into the property. That's one good reason to terminate a tenancy on a no fault 60 day notice. So you have to give a 60 day notice on those ones. Uh, let me just back up a bit. At fault reasons, three day notice to, to cure or quit. If they don't fix the problem, then they, you can evict them after three days. The no fault reasons generally require a 60 day notice. So you want to move your family in, you have to give a 60 day notice. 
and then the, the tenant has to move out at the end of 60 days. Um, the other reasons are owner intends to sell the property, the property is being withdrawn from the rental market, uh, or there's a, uh, a remodeling or substantial habitability problem that needs to be fixed. In other words, very serious problems that need to be fixed at the property that make the, that make the property uninhabitable. Those are the grounds on which you can give a 60 day notice. So either at fault or no fault, there are ways to evict. Um, but the, the, the special reason that is in effect until September 30th, that's quite controversial is rent. If the tenant normally under California law, if the tenant does not pay rent, you give a three day notice to pay rent or quit. Mm -hmm. Under the current COVID law, you can't do that anymore. You have to give a 15 day notice along with a rights advisement. In other words, uh, it's about a five or six page set of documents saying, tenant, you have 15 days to either pay the rent or pay 25% of the rent or provide a declaration of financial hardship. And here's all your rights. And the, the new thing that went into effect is enhanced um, rental assistance, which we're, we're going to get into later. But uh, yeah. for purposes of closing out my segment here, you have to give this 15 day notice. All the tenant has to do is sign a declaration saying I have financial hardship. It doesn't have to be true. The tenant just has to sign it. <laughs> and if the tenant signs it, then you can't evict them for non-payment of rent. So that's the way, that's, the, I'm, I mean, to me, what I just said is you basically can't evict someone for non-payment of rent right now until September 30th. If all they have to do is sign a piece of paper and if the paper doesn't have to be true, you can't evict the person. So we're doing very, very few cases for non-payment of rent. We're, we're not even trying, basically. It's, it's a waste of time. And the uh, rental assistance has thrown even more uh, momentum away from using non-payment of rent. So we'll get into that later. But that's a quick overview of what's been going on in California over the last 16, 17 months with evictions. Evictions are happening. A lot of people think that there's no evictions because of COVID-19. Totally wrong. Where yeah. Evictions are happening all the time. We're kicking people out for various reasons, either at fault or no fault reasons. Uh, of the you know 150 or so cases I've done since September, only one has been for non-payment of rent. Only one, <laughs> and so all the rest are for other reasons. Um, so that gives you some idea of what your odds are in terms of how to evict someone. I'd say 25% are for at-fault reasons. The other 75% are for no-fault reasons. We're kicking them out because of family move-in, intention to sell the property, uh, habitability. You know, family move-in and selling the property are the two big ones. Those are the those are the biggest ones that we're using right now. That's that's my quick overview of the over, of the law over the last 17 months, um, and and I'll leave it to you after that. Perfect. Okay, and that's what I wanted to clarify because uh, obviously a lot of my clients, when I talk to them, they're under the impression that just because you can't evict somebody because of non-payment, they think that you can't evict them. Period. And the reality is that you can. There's just other ways to go about it. Meaning, whenever you tell the courts why you're evicting them. It's not because of the non-payment. It's because either a family member is moving in, uh, you're moving into the property, a huge breach of contract, or even that you decided to sell the property. We've had a couple clients that had tenants that are not paying and decided to sell the property. Uh, here's one that if you're an escrow on the property with an owner user, you actually only have to give them a 30 day notice versus a 60 day notice. So there's multiple ways if, you're in a situation like this where you want to sell a property or you just want to take the property off the rental market or the tenant is breaching the contract completely. There are different ways to basically evict a tenant that's not paying, not necessarily because of non-payment, but for other reasons as well too. Now, the only thing I did want to ask you, Brian, is, and this will transition to our ne next part, which Camila will be going over. Um, but then the last part is, if the tenant was behind on the rent, one of the options was that the tenant at the end of the eviction moratorium is supposed to pay 25% of that. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? And then right. that transition into the other option that if they don't, uh, uh, that there's another option, which is the rental assistance as well too. Yeah. So the way the law is written right now, if a tenant has financial hardship, they're supposed to pay 25% of the rent. So in other words, let's say that you have a tenant with who's paying thousand dollars a month rent, the tenant is only supposed to pay $2,250 of that uh, rent. But here's the kicker. The 25% does not have to actually be paid until the deadline. And right now the deadline is September 30th, 2021. 
So let's say that you have a tenant that stopped paying rent in, um, you know, just hypothetically October 2020. And then that over the last 12 months, all they're just racking up the 25 percent, 25 percent. Well, the tenant can the tenant can stay in the house legally by paying zero just by filling out the financial hardship declaration. And then theoretically, on October 1st, 2021, that whole the 25 percent is due. Actually, the whole thing might be due on October 1st. We're not sure what the law is going to change to. But um you know, people think that they have to pay the 25%. No, they don't. They don't have to pay anything. They just have to, the, the law is say, saying that they, they're on the hook. A lot of tenants are actually paying the 25%. So that's kind of a nice show of good faith. I think if tenants truly are financially struggling, then, and they can at least pay the 25%, that, that shows that the tenant has some good character at least, but legally they don't have to pay anything. Perfect. Now, the other option, and this is the option where Camila is going to come into play on a previous video with another attorney. We talked about landlord and tenant assistance, which I think everyone on this call agrees that that's a better option for landlords and tenants because there's actually assistance programs from the state of California that provides landlords and tenants with money. So Camila, do you mind elaborating on that? Like what is this, or maybe Brian can elaborate on what does this program look like? And then Camila can talk about the process. All right. So your first question was what the program is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What the program is and then just what the process uh, looks like. I know that we went, we, we did it basically with one of our properties that we bought where a tenant wasn't paying. So after that, maybe we can just go over the process. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a program that, um, it's by which I didn't know, but it's a lottery program that you're chosen by lottery where you need to apply either the landlord or the tenant um, and uh, you are uh, eligible. You could be eligible to get uh, financial assistance for rent. So the process pretty much is that you would go into the website, either the tenant or the landlord, go to housing.ca.gov and um, you would have to start the application process, make a make your you know typical username and password and go in um when i started the process i would start with adding the tenant's information so you're going to need um, their phone number uh name that's on the lease everybody that's on your lease and their email address um and it's make sure it's the correct email address because they will also need to finish their section of the application so it's very important for you to communicate with your tenant, letting them know that you're going to be doing this because they will also need to submit some paperwork on their behalf to make sure they are also eligible to, to qualify. Awesome. awesome. Um, so then, yeah, so I would upload um, all of our lease. So whoever isn't paying our lease agreements, um, they're going to require um, the tenant ledgers pretty much stating how much you they're owing you um, so what well, we we kept a record of every month of how much this tenant was owing us with the balance so um it, it was about about eight months so i would have to submit all of that um and also either a copy of our grant deed or w9 so those are the main forms that us as the landlord had to submit to the portal um and then when I finish the application, just general questions, you know, um, typical math of how much they're owing, if utilities are included, um, if you're also, uh, they also cover utilities. Um, and yeah, after that point, you communicate with your tenant, letting them know that they're going to be receiving a link once you um, finish the application process and they will need to complete their application on their behalf. So it's very important that they do that if, if, um, if not, unfortunately, uh, you would not be eligible. They'll need to explain from the tenant's perspective. When I spoke to her, you'll need to explain pretty much um, how you are affected by COVID. And um, they'll need to submit the ledgers as well, the ones that you would provide them um, with the, of the, their balance and their lease agreement too. Um, and also they need to show some sort of proof as to how they are affected and why they can't pay rent. Um, I don't know what proof our tenant showed, but um, they'll, they'll do their due diligence uh, with the program and making sure that you're, that they're yeah. actually, yeah, they're legit. Yeah. There actually so, is a 
in place and that you actually are the owner of the property and mm-hmm. there actually is a, a hardship as well too now um does it cover a hundred uh, now what what does the program actually cover does it cover a hundred percent uh, does it cover 80 percent of the missed rent um what does that look like for you? yeah so originally it was only covering 80 percent of the rent and then 20 we would just forgive but um just recently now it's covering full the full rent 100 percent. so originally the program was only covering 80 and then the landlord would have to forgive the 20. now with the new extension it actually covers 100 percent. basically in other words Correct. Yeah. So it will cover 100% and then plus additional three months of the tenant's rent. Okay. Uh, no, no. So that was the previous one. That's not the, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by the three months? So in advance. So let's say it's July and we got approved for July. So August, September and October's rent. So with the new one, it just basically covers through the eviction. The eviction. It basically covers until the end of the eviction uh, moratorium. Perfect. Okay, good. And then, what is the app? How long does the application process typically take? Like from the time that you submitted the application, like uh, um, how long did it take for the tenant to be reached out to by them? And then, how long was the entire process would you say? Um. So I submitted the application. I would say the first week of April. Um. Uh-huh. And then sh- my clients, I have never made an application for rental assistance myself. But uh-huh. my clients are telling me that it's a difficult, cumbersome process. And uh-huh. I'll, I'll just give you some some idea. Expect that it's going to take at least two to three months from the time that you uh-huh. apply to the time you get your check. Expect that. It's not going to be okay. something where you apply and then the next next day you're getting a check. No, not at all. It's going to take months. So uh, here's what I'm going to offer to the to the viewers, which is. I have a uh, whole packet of pamphlet uh, relating to the California Department of Housing's uh, rental assistance program. The website is housingiskey.com, housingiskey.com. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, send me a text, send me an email. I have a whole set of materials that I will email to you, which has all the application forms, um, the website, the contact information. But I'll I'll just give you a, a flavor for what to expect, which is, you know, you have to provide a copy of the lease agreement. The the tenant has to provide a copy of the lease agreement, a copy um, state issued ID or driver's license, official letter from third mm-hmm. party showing name and address, such as a utility bill or some other thing, verifying that the tenant does live at that address, a government issued library card or utility statements. In other words, those are all the things that, that the tenant must submit. Okay. The owner has to submit a property deed, mortgage notes, property tax forms, homeowners insurance. And then in addition, you have to have a, a rent, uh, you know, like I say, a copy of the lease rent ledger showing how much the rent was, how much rent is owing. So that gives you some idea of how many documents they're requiring to verify this, because you can imagine that there's a lot of people. They see the government's giving out free money. They're fraudulently trying to get some of the money. I'm sure some of the money is going into bad people right now anyway. Uh-huh. Um, it's a very, for the honest landlord and the honest tenant that want to take advantage of this program to get the 100% rent. Why? You're going to have to give a lot of documents. You're going to have to wait for two or three months. Everyone that I talk to tells me that, tells me that the, pro, the, the people there are not answering the phone. It takes them several days to a week to answer an email. Uh, and it's going to take two to three months before you get the actual payment. Um, the website, like I said, I've never used the website, but the web website is cumbersome, not terribly well designed, but it is housingiskey.com. And, you know, here's what I tell people. Yes, it's cumbersome. Yes, it takes a long time. Apply for it anyway. Mm-hmm. There's no cost to apply for the rental assistance. So why not apply for this? All it takes is maybe, you know, maybe one hour, maybe two hours of your time, then five minutes once or twice a week to follow up on the application. That that costs you zero dollars to rank, make the application for the rental assistance. So why not apply for the rental assistance? And, you know, it, it's something that goes both ways. Why would the landlord not apply? Why would the tenant not apply? It's, you know, just it, it's absolutely common sense. Get the free money, get the rent paid. When the rent is paid by the housing is key, uh, you know, the California Department of Housing, the tenant no longer owes the rent. So the tenant has a strong incentive to get this done. 
when the, the rent is paid, the landlord gets the money. So both the landlord and the tenant have a strong incentive to make this happen. I can tell you, though, I have many situations in which the landlord and tenant are in a hostile relationship and they're not doing it. It's really unfortunate. That's so my advice to people is, you know, get be, get beyond the acrimony and work together and get that rental assistance going. Just you know, It helps get, out both parties. You know, it, it helps a tenant be able to stay in the property and it helps yeah. the landlord collect all those missed payments of rent. And then it doesn't make it so that the tenant owes all this money after the fact. And it's basically forgiven, which is just a great program. But I think you're right, Brian. I think that this uh, uh, issue or this situation has caused a lot of hostility between certain tenants and certain landlords. And I know a lot of tenants and landlords that at one point they had a great relationship and now are not even on, on speaking terms whatsoever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it gets to the whole issue of uh, you know the character of the tenant. I mean, there are some tenants that just for some reason they don't they don't want to apply because they they don't want the landlord to benefit. And I don't know. And, and there might be some landlords that are just bad people too. I mean, it goes both ways, I'm sure. But uh, my advice to everyone is, you know, get the free money, cooperate, and and be reasonable. And then on October first, you can make a decision. I mean. Um, if the land, if the landlord and tenant show that they're both good people, then and the rent gets mostly taken care of, then on October first, maybe you can go forward and continue with a good landlord tenant relationship, which I think yeah. is is in everyone's best interest. If on October first the tenant's just saying, you know, screw you, landlord, I don't even feel like applying for the free money, well, then you have a really good idea of what kind of tenant that is, and you can take action appropriately. At that point, so you know. the, the understanding is that once the hopefully or not hopefully, but once the eviction moratorium on September 30th ends, they could extend it again or things can go back to normal. Those are basically the two options that have happened. It's already been extended a, a, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, the, the last thing, Camila, I wanted to ask you on our case, I, I know Brian said that a minimum of two to three months. I think you said you applied April 30th, which was very early on uh, when this program uh, came on. I think we recently got approved, so uh, that would be May, April, or May, May, June, July. So about three months, roughly, for the process to get approved. Does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about my internet there. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> Went to go pay it really quick. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So it took about three months. Um, it took about three months to um, to uh get approval but it just took like a lot of following up you know and on my behalf and then the tenants behalf i would make sure she was oh, asking her that she, please call or email them and maybe i would say every two weeks i wouldn't go without two weeks without at least sending them an email or talking to someone or also getting a case manager i didn't know that um there was a specific person that gets assigned to your portal and then just getting like a direct contact okay. so getting your case there's a case manager to your portal so if you do have someone then get a point of contact do you have an email from them do you get a, a direct phone number for them what what does that communication look like or the follow-up look like yeah there is an email once you apply um and it's a generic email and phone number that you can call and and they'll, they'll pick up the, the the phone with no no issues every time i called i got through um but the they would always tell me like we're very backed up there's many applications everyone's calling you know um but i think the key for us was getting con getting a main point of contact uh and getting our case manager's phone number and just communicating directly to her like hey where are we at do you need anything do you need any clarifications on the application because they're going to be calling you to ask questions if, if something's not clear so you want to make sure like for me i made sure everything i submitted was was right the first time as opposed to delaying the process because even with with me submitting everything once correctly it took three months you know imagine if you didn't submit it correctly yeah. looking at five months now instead of uh instead of the three months and now then what happens is at some point you get approved and then there's a disbursement so in other words we're in the approval process but we're waiting on the check disbursement basically which what timeline did they give you to actually have the check? Between two three weeks, it's going to be mailed out to the landlord. Perfect. Yeah, and I want to point out something. You guys applied three months ago, and you still haven't gotten paid. 
No, no, not at all. So it, I have had clients. I, some of my clients actually have gotten paid. And we're talking, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar checks that have arrived for my clients. And but it took them months and months to get it. So, you know, going the, to this process with a realistic mindset, which is you're going to have to submit the papers. It's going to be a lot of papers that you submit. You're going to have to follow up over and over and over again over like, you know, over three months, once or twice a week. You're going to be following up. And then at the end of this, after three to four months, you're going to finally get your check. So that's that's how that's what I'm telling people. Don't don't expect to get your paycheck tomorrow. It's going to take a long time. The, the only question I have left is what, what what did you mean when we said lottery program? Does that mean that not everybody will get chosen or does that mean that everybody gets chosen or is this program available? Is there does anybody know if there's limited funds or yeah, so it's not um, it's not everybody gets chosen. Not uh, yeah, so it, it is a lottery basis uh, um, program. So and it's yeah, and it's only a certain amount of funds. I don't know how much the funds are, but yeah, that's only yeah, it's lottery, and we're we got it. <laughs> it's it's kind of yeah. I, well, I think that they're trying to give more money and more assistance to the lower income tenants. So the person who's paying like twelve hundred bucks a month rent or something, you know, two thousand dollars a month rent, those are the people that probably have a higher probability. Okay. Whereas the people who are paying five or six or ten thousand dollar a month rent in the fancy homes, those are the people who have lower probability. But I, I don't know if there's any more randomness to it than that, but I know that the program is intended to help out lower income people. Perfect. So that might be one of the qualified things. Great. So I wanted to thank both of you, uh, Brian and Camila. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, this has been episode number seventy. Uh, the last thing I wanted to offer Brian is always just an opportunity. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you, obviously they like your services, they like the value that you're providing. What is the best way for somebody uh, to do that? I uh, am always able to be reached by my phone, which I'll give out right here, 805-444-5960. You can text me as well. Also check out my website, www.briannomi.com. This is just my name, briannomi.com. I'm happy to take phone calls. Even if I can't be your lawyer, I I will give you some of my time for free. I'm just, I'll point you in the right direction. And, uh, you know, I'll plug you as well, Jose Luis. You really get the job done with real estate. Good job. And thanks for all spreading the good information. Your, your podcast and, and YouTube videos are very educational. I, I've learned a heck of a lot just by watching them. Thank you. Thank you. And then the last thing, Camila, I don't know if you want to give any sort of uh, plug or anything like that. If somebody saw value in what you have to offer, maybe want to follow you on Instagram or something like that. Um, you're free to do so. If not, uh, that'll be the end. So, okay. No, I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so this was episode number 70 of the Morales group show. Uh, we talked about landlord assistance. We talked about the eviction moratorium. Uh, if you've enjoyed the episode, feel free to hit that subscribe button, share the video. If you, uh, maybe see somebody else can benefit from this video. Thanks so much and stay tuned uh, for future uh, episodes. Make it a great day.